So today we're going to be going over how to assemble the rack and pinion drive system, which is new from cncriderparts.com. Uh, the kits come with a lot of parts, so I wanted to give people an overview of the parts and how they go together to make a drive system. So the first thing you'll need is uh, linear axis um, using some of our extended carriages, uh, which you see here we have on a, on a test bed. Um, the extended carriages will need to have two holes tapped uh, for 3 8 16 bolts, one on this end, which will be for uh, the pivot point for the rack and pinion plate, and this one on the other end, which is a mounting point for the tensioning spring, which holds the rack and pinion engaged with the rack. Now you can see on this piece of extrusion, the rack is mounted using, these are prototype rack clamps, but they work the same as the rack clamps we sell in the store. So, let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do with this is take your NEMA 23 stepper motor and mount the pulley, the timing belt pulley onto it. I've already done that here, uh, but it's fairly straightforward. The pulley goes on and there's two set screws to connect it. The next thing to do is to attach that to the rack and pinion drive plate. So, this setup involves connecting the motor to the drive plate using these slots to hold the hex nuts. Let's get this in there. And then they fit right in. Okay, so now that we have the motor mounted to the plate, we can connect the drive spindle assembly. This involves taking the one inch shoulder bolt dropping it into the drive spindle assembly, taking the 3H, 3 8 inch high collar lock washer, putting that on the end, and then inserting this into the tapped hole on the rack and pinion drive plate. This takes a quarter inch Allen wrench, screws in place. Next step is to install the timing belt that connects these two together. So we may need to adjust the bolts from the motor installation to get this on. Okay, so now we have the belt installed and tensioned. You can see that it's pretty tight on there, and that's good. That'll remove backlash from the system. The next step is to mount the unit to the extended linear carriage. So to do that, we'll be using the half-inch shoulder bolt that came with the kit, along with this precision shoulder bolt shim. And that will allow a small amount of distance between the plate and the carriage to allow for pivoting. So we put the shim onto the shoulder bolt. Then we'll install the shoulder bolt through the bushing and install the whole system on the carriage. All that remains to do is to connect the spring tensioning mechanism. This consists of the turnbuckle and spring and two screws, one that goes into the carriage and one that goes into the rack plate. The last step is to connect the turnbuckle and to adjust the tension and the rack and pinion system is ready to go. You can adjust the tension by turning the turnbuckle that's loosening it. 
and this direction tightens it. Depending on the material you're cutting and the speeds you want to cut at, uh, you'll adjust the tension differently. For harder materials, wood, aluminum, you'll want a good deal of tension on this so that the rack won't skip out of, uh, the pinion gear won't skip out of the rack during high forces during cutting. But if you're cutting foam or balsa or other light materials, you won't need to adjust this nearly as much.